Uh, I want us to get into the great falling away. What is the great falling away? What is the great falling away? Go through to Matthew chapter number 24, verse 12. Matthew chapter number 24. And those sign up, remember, sign up by how to hear the voice of God. Okay. Matthew chapter number 24, verse number 12. And we have, I think, about just over 800 people on right now. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 12. Remember, here in Matthew chapter number 24, Jesus is speaking about... Um, the signs of the end times, yes. the birth pains, what is happening. And uh, I want to read this to you. You know, he says, listen, many will be deceived you and etc. Listen to verse 24. He says these words, and because lawlessness will abound, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. We have to understand what is the word lawlessness. You know, in the Greek word, the word lawlessness is what we call iniquity in the Greek. Uh, iniquity means twisted. It means law. Well, in the New King James, my apologies. In the New King James, it says lawlessness. In the King James, it probably says iniquity. Eh? Okay, so in the King James, it says iniquity will abound. In the New King James, which is actually a bit of a bit more ac the correct uh, translation in this verse, not in other verses, in this verse, it says lawlessness. Now, the word lawlessness doesn't mean without law. It actually means to create another law. And this is not a law of a political law. This is within the moral laws of God. I'm going to say it again. This is within the context of the moral laws, the yes. biblical laws of consciousness, of conscious, conscious uh, of, uh, of God. If, for example, you don't have to know it is evil to murder. Yes. You, can, you know within you, without being saved, it is wrong to kill, to kill some, to murder. Yes. You know it is wrong. Because it is the law of God that's been put into your hearts already. The law of God is there. And when we see in Romans 1 how God will turn them and give them over to a reprobate mind. Because you have, you're born with an inherent, conscious, an inherent law of God. Yes. That inherent law of God brings judgment to you already on this earth. That's right. Um, it, it brings a judgment in a way of whether God, if, whether we will be overturned. Now, I'm going to explain why do I believe this whole C-19 and everything is so dangerous? Because it's coming into the church. It's bringing a culture. And we're going to see now, remember, we're speaking on the great falling away. Jesus said, let me read it to you again. In, um, in, in Matthew chapter number 24, verse 12, Jesus said, Because iniquity, lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So he said, there's a lawlessness that's going to break out. But the word lawlessness, as I said, is a people, it speaks actually of an entire society or a culture, comes from a political meaning. It's used from a political meaning, but it speaks of the, of the uh, mosaic law, a, a, a law of God that is put into our hearts, a moral standards. And this is speaking of a people who live. So somebody, when the Bible says lawlessness, it's speaking of somebody who's living apart from God's laws and principles. Yes. Somebody that's living apart from God's laws and principles. Okay, now imagine this. Most of your nations, even the United States, was found what? On, on the Bible. They will not be saved, but their principles and laws were found on Scripture. It is a moral code that has been imprinted into your conscience. You know stealing is wrong. Nobody has to tell you. Yes. You know lying is wrong. Nobody has to tell you. Um, so... This is not speaking. So when Jesus, so Jesus said, this end time, the sign of the end times is coming. Because uh, to, just towards the end, there's a lawlessness that will abound. So we see, okay, there's a people that will create their own law. Make that law right in the eyes of man. So, for example, what has changed? 40 years ago, you will not find um, same-sex marriage. Yeah. Today... It is not only allowed or tolerated, it is celebrated. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. It's not tolerated, it's celebrated. So you see God's law reversed, another law put in place and celebrated. Where people lose their moral conscious code. You know, so... In this, what we call the great falling away, I'm going to get to the scripture that Paul speaks about right now. We see two things happening. We see an apostasy in the world and we see an apostasy in the church. Yes. An apostasy 
in the world and an apostasy in the church. Okay? So you have an apostasy in the world. Let's touch on the apostasy in the world. Romans 1. Romans 1 verse 28. And if you don't know, the Romans 1 speaks about uh, God giving people over to a reprobate mind. But Romans 1 verse 28 says this. And even as they, speaks of the society, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. To do those things which are not convenient. I'll get to the word convenient just now. It's speaking of a, it's speaking of a moral uh, decay, the word convenient. I'll get to that just now. But he's saying that because they did not retain the knowledge of God. What is that word retaining the knowledge? Because they did not retain the law of God. The moral code that said to them, this is wrong. Do you know when Sodom and Gomorrah was taken out, uh, it was destroyed by fire? Yes. Uh, that they have found skeletons where it was instantly killed. So it was not like a process. It was, it was people that were together that were instantly killed on whatever happened. Okay, where, whatever happened there. Um, uh, 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 instantly killed where it was skeletons of the same sex lying together. Groups, many of them, which speaks of the sin that came into Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes. And why God destroyed it. Now we can liken that to the days of Noah even. Yes. Because it's a repetition. What happened in the days of Noah, then you see it happening again in Sodom and Gomorrah. Then you see it happening again. Uh, uh, and then you see it where we are right now in the times where we are at. So the word retain, when the Bible says they have not retained, it's they'd not like to retain God in their knowledge. Yeah. The law of God. The word retain means to hold and to embrace. It is used to speak of a people who did not embrace the knowledge of God. What is it speaking of this context of a knowledge of God? It's speaking of a measuring stick. Yeah. A measure to measure where is morally right or wrong. So, we see the LGBTQ movement increasing. We see all these things being celebrated. And we see another law rising up, attacking the church. And this is where the apostasy coming in. That is why I'm saying that we are so close. And we're getting, we're still going through the teaching. Meaning that the phrase which Paul uh, uses in the book of Romans where it says they did not like to retain God in their knowledge tells us that, um, tells us that these people chose to let go of God and lay aside scriptures. It is a choosing. Them, they did not retain. This is not a God turning away from them. This is a people turning away from God in their hearts. And we're not speaking of salvation. We're speaking of the moral code, yes. the moral principle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Romans 1 verse 28 speaks of a people who once had the knowledge of God in them. Every person is born yes. with the knowledge of God in them. That's right. Everyone. And we can get into the Hebrew word and the Greek word of knowledge. And get right into exactly that, that there is a knowledge that is preordained in them. Everyone has the knowledge of God and can discern between good and evil. You do not need to be saved. So these are the people who had that moral code and they cast it off. Yes. So the Bible is saying, Jesus is saying, the end is coming. When lawlessness and iniquity abounds, when a people change the law and they no longer retain God in their hearts. Since Jesus spoke that time till now is the first time where laws has been changed to endorsing uh, same-sex marriages, to endorse transgenderism. I thought I will be a unvac person identifying myself as a vaccinated person. <laughs> You know, what's wrong with that? Yeah. We believe in transgenderism. We include it. I'll be an unvaccinated person. Identifying myself as a vaccinated person. 
So, uh, 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 so let's go on. I want us to go to what Paul says with, um, with uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, and we'll get back now to Romans 1 verse 28 again. But uh, let's go to 2 Thessalonians uh, 2 verse 3. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. Now, let me, in fact, let me read from verse 1. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1. Listen to this. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1. Speaking about the great apostasy. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you. So it's not speaking of His second coming here. Speaking of His rapture. Because He will gather us together to Him. That is why I call the rapture the second coming. Not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ had to come, had, had come. So Paul was basically speaking to them here, giving them advice because false doctrines went ahead and said that Christ had already come. The rapture had already taken place. So Paul had to write uh, the letter in Thessalonians, to the church at Thessalonica, saying to them, listen here, those who are preaching and saying to you the rapture has already come, is preaching a false doctrine. The day of Christ had not yet come. So the church was getting unsettled. They thought Christ had come, the rapture had taken place, and they were left behind. Apostasy, it's as a mutiny of spirituality stepping away from the unity of gatherings. Yeah, that's, that's good. It's a mutiny. It, it is. That's a part of it. It's actually a political mutiny. Uh, but you will see how, how Jesus spiritual and Paul spiritualizes this word. And we see that there's an apostasy in the world, which I just explained to you now, where people no longer retain God in their knowledge and they cast him off. Okay. And uh, then you have an apostasy that creeps over from that into the church. So what is this doctrine of inclusiveness? Of let's include this, let's include transgenderism, let's include this, let's include the LGBTQ movement, let's include, let's include. Do we believe there's salvation? Of course. Do we, uh, we can't include it. Uh, it's it's uh, in, 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 in our belief system as in that, they, that, that, is God's, that is God's plan. No, 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 no. There's salvation for those. There's deliverance for those. We have seen people delivered. We have seen people delivered from these spirits and listen to me it is pure spirits it is the end time agenda the end time spirit of antichrist what does the bible say about him he will have no regard for women yeah. and the actual translation is, says he will have no attraction yeah. towards women so what is he we are closer than we've ever known before to the rapture of the church he himself will come out of a seed and he will have no attraction. It tells you Satan's agenda for the hour. And you see how these marches all around the world has gone up where people have now put in this new law, thrown away the knowledge of God. Listen to it. So this is verse two. They say, he says that you worry yourself by the fact that the day of Christ did not come. Verse three, let no one deceive you. Let no one deceive you by any means. <coughs> Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come. I'm going to say it again. That day. What is that day? The rapture will not come unless the falling away comes first. And then. That word an is kai in the Greek. So it means then. The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Yes. So he says, that day will not come unless there is a great falling away. The great falling away uh, comes first, then that day will come. But that great falling away will come and then the man of uh, sin is revealed, the son of perdition. We are seeing right now there's a worldwide, global, one world order being established and set up. This system that is anti-God, that is fighting God, creating their own laws, is setting up a moral decay where people will go into masses following, including many in the church will follow that law so that it sets the stage for this figure of the Antichrist to arise once the church is raptured. 
Because you see, when the church is raptured, people are going to be like, okay, but the Christians were right. So these hearts have to be deceived by a great falling away already. So that when the rapture happens, they can be so anti-God that when the Antichrist rise, they can embrace him as the true one. That's right. Because the knowledge of God in their hearts will already be cast off. There's a lot of questions here. Uh, we'll get to the questions now. I'm from Pakistan. Please pray for financial blessing. Awesome, awesome. Esther is arise, will not be silenced. Esther's arise, will not be. Amen. Amen. So, so listen to this. So Paul is saying, unless the great falling comes first, the Son of Man's prediction will, that that day will not come. So uh, this is what we call an hour where Paul says, I think it is in verse 7. Let me read you verse 7. He says this, for the mystery of iniquity. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who is now restrained will do so until he is taken out of the way, which is the Holy Ghost, the restrainer, which is in Christians, which becomes the church, church the restrainer, taken away. The uh, tribulation will come. And you know how many preachers I'm going to have that's going to fight me on this right now, that I'm just dare to preach this. Well, this is what I fully believe. So Paul described the falling away that will take place. He used the word a mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness. Yes. He's speaking of a whole society that will go, not just one city of like Sodom and Gomorrah or one city like a part of Cape Town, yes. a whole society, governments, nations, European nations, United States nations, South Africa, all these nations, the British nations will go into a revolt against God. They will have a moral decay, a throw off of the law of God in them, a casting off. It will be an unleash of a full steam in an attempt to lead an entire planet into various forms of deceptions. Meaning, no, it's right for you to identify yourself as a plant or a lampstand or a lamp. Some women identify themselves as a lamp. Yeah. Another man got married to a street pole or a lamp, I think like seven times or something like that. Now, you want to tell me that's human? Okay, wait, sorry. Uh, people are going to fight that. No, it's not human. It's demonic. It's a demon thinking. It's no longer, that person is no longer there. That person needs to be, uh, that, the, the devil needs to be delivered from the person, okay, that uh, it's, it is, you know, we need to set that devil free. <laughs> and that is just a slight joke. But what is it? It is God giving them over to a reprobate mind. Yes. A mind that can no longer think rightly. Now I'll get to, I'll get to that just now. But uh, Paul says this. He says once the church has been caught up in the rapture, harpazo, caught away, caught up to meet with the Lord in the air, and I believe that's in one Thessalonians four verse seventeen. Yes. We see the uh, the the uh, lost world in general to reject God altogether. So once the church is raptured, you'll see a whole world will reject God. But just before that, it is already, there'll be a great, Paul Merit there says, this falling away will happen before the rapture takes place. And that sets in a stage for the son of the perdition, the man of sin, otherwise known as the Antichrist. Yes. Okay, it sets the stage for him to come in and be embraced. Remember the word Antichrist, not anti-God, it is actually a um, pseudo-Christ. Yes. Another Christ, another type of Christ. Uh, but this falling away that Paul speaks about, it is a prophetic unfolding of a time, meaning, in fact, in the Greek, it speaks of a huge, I think it was Andre and um, Nodia, or Anton Nodia, that just said it's like a mass mutiny. Yes. In the Greek, it literally means a mass mutiny that will come against. Uh, that is that is taking place. It's a political word initially used from politics, from society. But Paul bringing it into the church saying even there's going to be these leaders and uh, they're going to side with this moral decay that is taking place. Yeah, that's right. How many pastors are too scared to say that if you don't accept Jesus Christ, Lord, Savior, you're not into, into heaven from from. Oprah Winf on Oprah Winfrey pastors that has been on their ministers, what has happened? They accept a standard of a moral decay of a law of God that has been lost. Yeah. 
that is no, and that has been willfully given up. This, and this is not people whom God are putting away. This is a people who have turned away from the law of God that is put into their heart. And salvation, in fact, a lot of people fight and say, you know, uh, because I, I disagree. I don't believe the great revival is the sign before the rapture. And I was fought on that. Am I saying there's going to be a no great revival? No. I'm just saying that's not the sign. Yes. The Bible says there'll be a great falling away before this day will happen. It's going to be a revival. Great. But so many will hate God that there will actually not be a great revival in the way we think. Because yeah. we've been preached to, even when I was young, that, uh, you know, the whole world will get saved almost. That's the revival that's going to break out. Then the rapture of the church. No. This is a people revolting against God. This is a people hating God. Even when you preach to them, the truth is not in them. They do not want the law of God in them. Yeah. They will hate you. How do you think, even in the nation of South Africa, do you know how many racism has come into South Africa? Do you know how many racism has, uh, has come into, into this nation? How many anti the church and anti Christ has suddenly risen the last two to three years? I have never seen such hatred for preachers, such hatred for prophets. I have people saying, shut up your white prophets, shut up your white preacher, just stay in your line, you this and, and that. And the, 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 um, the moral decay that has entered into the hearts of people, not only in the area of sin, but actually turning against God, knowingly, before they are even saved. This is the apostasy that comes in. So there are two areas for the apostasy, which, which, uh, which the Bible speaks. The apostasy in the world, which I speak to now about a mutiny, a world, uh, a, world a revolt, a, a global revolt, a, a moral decay, a casting off of the law of God, the knowledge of God inside of us. And we see then how this slips into the church and it's going to start a great apostasy and a great falling away within the church right before the rapture. Meaning, there are people that are going to fall into the clutches and the traps of this right before the rapture. People like, ah, but you're preaching about the rapture and so on. Or, you know, what if it doesn't happen in your time? So what if it doesn't happen? But what if it does? There's a great reward that I'll receive just for preaching on the rapture. Yes. You know, so the words falling away, it's a mass mutiny. It's a, polit a political term used that's speaking of a whole society that will turn against God. Uh, um, uh, meaning that both Jesus and Paul prophesied a great falling away that's coming before the church is raptured. This is why it is crucial. And the Bible says that because of this great falling away, this lawlessness, this iniquity, what did he say? Jesus said these words in Matthew 24. He said, because of this, the love of many will wax cold. Yes. The love of many across the planet will grow cold. The love of many will grow cold. A hatred. You will see no longer Christians loving one another, affectionately loving one another, loving their neighbor, um, uh, reaching out to one another, uh, married to a street pole. Yep, not sure if I heard that. Yep, you can go Google it. Uh, it's either a street pole or a, or a lamp stand. Uh, either or. No, there was literally, I think there was a street pole. Sure. You can go Google it. There was a street pole. I remember the person standing in New York <laughs> getting married to the street pole. Okay. Yes, yes. They got married to a street pole. <laughs> And, uh, you know, so, so there's a whole moral decay. So did God, did God throw these people away? No. Because of the law of God in them. In Romans 1 verse 28, it says these words. It says that God gave them over to a reprobate mind. But then it goes on. It says to de do these things which are not convenient. To do these things which are not convenient. I want to get into those words. We'll get into those words just now. Where it speaks of to do those things which are not convenient. Because it actually doesn't mean that in the actual language. But let me first touch on this verse where it's speaking of uh, 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 that, that, um, that God did not walk away. Let me, let me go to it. Romans 1 verse 28. Otherwise I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to think up here trying to remember the verse. Romans 1 verse 28. Listen to this. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, in their knowing, they did not want to retain the law of God. God gave them over. He gave them over to a, in the, in the King James it says, a reprobate mind. Yeah. A rep, he gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting in the New King James. In the King James it says to do those things which are not convenient. Am I right? Uh, New King James is the based mind. To do the, yeah, yeah, to do those things which are not convenient. Yeah. The King James. King James, King James 
uh, and and meaning that uh, um, we have an instinct. How can I say it? Yeah, eternity isn't everyone. The law of God is in there. But you have an inter inherent, I don't want to say an instinct because that's more animalistic. So I don't want to use that word, but I want to say you have an inherent law, which is the law of God, which is a moral compass. You can feel guilty. Your conscience can convict you for doing something. When that conscience is seared and that law of God is rejected, God begins to give a whole society over to a reprobate mind. This is where we see marches. We see a whole society marching, uh, coming up, picket fencing. Uh, uh, I mean, just they are given over to a reprobate mind. They are thinking they are animals, some of them. Some of them think they are creatures. Some of them, there's no more he or she. It's now they and babies. No longer babies, but babies. And it, they've, it's a reprobate. When you listen to CNN or you listen to these news channels, you're thinking, what the hell? Like, like are these guys even, are they, are they on drugs? Are they literally on drugs? One baby says, no, she must ask her. One, one woman says she must ask her baby permission if she can give her a hiding. Are you, and are you, are you, you see, and we would feel guilty if we say that they are not human or a reprobate mind. The, the thinking is completely reprobate. How can I say what the wording reprobate means? It means twisted. It means perverted. The word reprobate means perverted, twisted. It means that you have become unfit. Yeah. Unfit, which actually means you can no longer make a sound and clear judgment. Yes, that's right. A reprobate mind. The word reprobate, it, it actually pictures an, an, an individual or the mind of an individual uh, or of an entire society or a culture becoming ill-affected, sin-damaged, especially in the areas of moral issues. Yeah. Moral issues. That is why we could say 50 years ago, I mean, people were still being brought up, grown up under a law of God. Not, they don't have to be Christians. There's just a moral law inside of them. But when that moral law changes, now it's LGBTQ all over. They're just adding on words. They're creating a law unto themselves. Yeah. It's the surest sign and the closest sign for the rapture. Um, Prophet Hannah is saying, so once saved is not saved, Prophet. No, 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 I'll get there. I'll get there. I never touched on that even tonight, okay? I preached before, once saved, always saved. Yes, definitely. And I'll back up my thing on that because that's why we wanted to touch on the great falling away, the apostasy. Because people think this is believers that's going to lose their salvation. Yeah, yeah. No. Nice. There's an apostasy in the world, which is a great falling away, a society a reprobate, a people becoming anti-God, a mutiny, yes. a revolt against God, against Christ, against the church, a revolt. Then that, mut then that apostasy will creep into the church. It will capture people in the church and begin to uh, cause them to accept the laws, that moral decay laws. So they will lose their fellowship with God, yes. but they will not lose their salvation. I'm going to say it again. They will lose their fellowship, but not their salvation. You cannot... You cannot, you cannot, you cannot lose your salvation. And I love all these ministers that so fight me on it. Then they fall into sin and all of a sudden they believe that also very quickly. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, uh, this grace thing, you know, this message of Joseph Prince. It's, it's, you know, they're giving people license to sin and then they fall into sin. Uh, God is speaking to me about this grace message now. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm just being in that light heartedly, but that's the truth. Yeah. And... Did I believe you can lose your salvation? Yes. Yeah. Do I live as if I can lose my salvation? Yes. Because let me tell you, I'll preach you a message that you'll fear your losing of rewards in heaven as much as what you actually think you fear hell. That losing of that reward, Paul said, will be so painful. It will be so embarrassing. You'll be naked in front of everyone ever that existed that is, that is there that can see you. In eternity. You'll be naked in front of them. You'll, your works will be made clear. Every lie, every thought, everything will be made clear for everybody to know for eternity. It will be burnt away with fire and you will be saved. Just, just, the Bible says. But that pain, Paul explains, he says it's an eternal pain of regret. Yeah. So yes, there'll be joy in heaven, but you'll have an eternal regret for not living every hour, every second for Christ.
So these people that are saying, but then I can sin and then just ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You're going to sit with an eternal regret. Salvation, listen to me. Is there, I want to see if there's any negative comments on you. Because not, you cannot lose your salvation. And I want you to get this. And people fight with me. Tell me this. I will fight you. I will sit with every theologian. And I'll argue. And I'm open. Yeah. But my, my, my school of thought was always the other way. Until I realized, no man, you cannot. Jesus is too secure on this thing. Definitely. We will call Jesus a liar. He will die in vain on the cross. Everything. Uh, 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 uh. The cross of Christ will be in vain. His blood will be shed in vain. If we can do by our works what his blood has done for us, then we could have attained salvation by our works. Yes. We haven't. Yeah. This righteousness, because we have not attained it, it cannot be taken away. But now, Leon, what if I, what if I don't believe in God? It is not your belief that gets you saved. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. It's not your belief. What does Ephesians say? It says, by grace. By grace. Okay. No. By faith. You get it for me? I, especially, I don't want to quote wrong, and I'm just when I'm put on the spot, I I I, I just forget some verses. By grace through by faith, grace through faith yeah. by grace through faith. So how are you saved? Are you saved by faith? No, by grace through faith. faith. I'm going to say it again. You are saved by grace through faith. So you can lose your faith and still be saved. Because the faith you had at that moment, you had faith at that moment to access the grace of God that got you saved. But you can lose that faith. You cannot believe as much as you believe that moment. But the grace is there. You already got saved. If you're saying to me, you need to keep your faith to get saved, I'll say you're a liar. Because there are days that you don't feel you have faith. When, you know, I, this is too much for people on here. <laughs> Go read a book of uh, Dr. Charles Stanley, one of the greatest teachers in the world. Um, one of the greatest teachers in the world. He has a book called Eternal Security so that you can get sure about your salvation. And you know what? This teaching will make you, should make you more hungry for God because that eternal regret, you will come in front of every saint. You will stand in front of every person you've ever known. They will know you lied to them. They will see the nakedness in that for eternity. By grace through faith. By grace through faith. So. Yeah. It's a gift. You have not earned it. If you think you can lose it, you are, uh, you are, um, you are insulting the spirit of grace. Yes. You've fallen from grace into the law. Your salvation is secure. Your salvation is eternal. And your salvation is sure. Your salvation is secure. Your salvation is eternal. Your salvation is sure. Now you should live for rewards. But now what about the apostasy that is creeping into the church? Yes, it is breaking fellowship. Yes, they will lose out great rewards. Yes. And they will cause many to be lost. Many. Um, somebody with a reprobate mind. They, it's somebody that is so distorted in their view. They see good as evil and evil as good. Yeah. They have no ability to discern, no ability to rightly judge anymore. Um, they have, uh, it's a mind that has lost an ability to separate good from evil and a sense of right from wrong. And what have we, in, that, is, that is what we are living in right now. It is a sin damaged mind. You know, I've gotten people saved. Their minds are literally burnt by sin. It's like, it's like their minds are fright. They can't even think and they have to relearn like a baby. Yes. Almost how to think of themselves. Why? It's the times we are living in where people's minds have been so damaged to become a reprobate. But there's the blood of Jesus Christ. But there's the mind of Christ. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Can God save somebody with a reprobate mind? Of course. Yes. When the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number six that there's no salvation, no repentance for those who have once tasted the gift, they don't know this. And he's speaking to the Jews there. Yeah. Speaking to a Jewish crowd. 
saying that if you go back, there is no repentance. That word repentance is not unto salvation. It's unto a way of thinking. He said, there's no way we can change your way of thinking. You're going to go back to the belief where you guys used to put Christ on the cross. Yes. Okay. So we must read. Remember, I teach our students, read the Bible within dispensational context. Read it within to whom it is written and by whom it is written. Yes. To whom it is written, for whom it is written, by whom it is written, the dispensational context of that book, under the law, under the grace, to the Jews, to the Gentiles, da da da. Okay. Um, Prophet, somebody was asking now, uh, Balaji is saying, what about Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23? Speaking of no, he's speaking of Christians there that has the anointing but not saved. Okay. Yeah. He's speaking of those, like for example, one theologian used a very powerful phrase, they used it as a mannequin. Yes. A mannequin. A let me, let me, it, 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 what does Jesus say? He said, I never knew you. Yeah, that's right. So you were somebody that's a fake Christian. You came into the church, the anointing came on you, but I never knew you. So he's not speaking of a backslidden Christian. He's speaking of those who come into the church. They have an outward appearance. And oh, I've seen many of them. I've seen them in the prayer meeting praying for hours in tongues. Yes. I've seen them quoting scriptures. I've seen them dressing the part. But if you open up the Bible, there's no marking, no speaking to the Holy Spirit. There's no saying, there's no personal conviction of a person, or there's no evidence of a personal relationship with God. And then when persecution hits the church, guess what? They are gone. Yes. That's what Matthew 7 verse 21 speaks about. The words when it says that God has given them over to a reprobate mind, that because it's not convenient for them. Let me just read that. Romans uh, 1 verse uh, 28. Just, just, do you have it there? Yeah. Just read it for me. Um, it says, and, uh, and even as they did not like to retain the, the God in their knowledge, he gave them over. God gave them over. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Yes. yes. And then? Um, to do the things which are not convenient. To, to do the things which are not convenient. In the Greek, that means to do the things which are not morally right or yeah, fitting. Not properly. So God gave them over into a reprobate mind so that they do the things which are not morally right or fitting. Because they didn't retain God. Anymore. Because they didn't retain the law of God. But God also had to do it for the end times to come. Yeah. There's a whole... Things that is the call the sovereignty of God. Yeah. Can they get saved? Absolutely. They can get saved. Absolutely. I've seen transgenders getting saved. I've seen homosexuals, lesbians getting saved. Uh, the, you know, um, uh, 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 this word that Jesus uses in Matthew 24 verse 12, the lawlessness iniquity, is speaking of a whole society. Very important to understand. It. Not speaking of only individuals. And then when he says it will abound... Abound. The word abound means that it will increase and flourish to such a state that it will overtake the whole planet. Sure. It will overtake the whole planet. Look at what they are bringing in. They are bringing certain laws, their own moral code into the whole planet. Same-sex marriage or this or that or trans or you can identify, like I said, because now we can identify as a vaccinated person in an unvaccinated body. I just feel I identify as a vaccine. I, I, I'm a vaccinated just because I say it. Doesn't that sound stupid? Yeah. It's a law that doesn't rightly discern or judge. So Jesus is here speaking about a worldwide condition, masses that is going to go into. And what are we seeing with all these masses that are coming up? We are seeing just this. So Paul is saying this mystery of iniquity will creep into the church. It is going to groom people in a church to also fall and bring this moral decay, this law, this standard into the church. So you're going to see churches that are very seeker sensitive. You're going to see churches that are even opening up their church buildings for vac centers. Yeah. They're accepting a moral code. Now... Okay, you know, I'm not saying those who accept the VAC is a moral. I'm just saying it is an establishment. It is definitely a system and it is definitely a precursor to what is coming. I hope everybody is still with me. Yes, yes. yes. Where are we? Matthew 24. Go through to Matthew 24. We're almost finished, almost finished. 
Matthew 24. Now you can ask me questions. You can ask me questions. Matthew 24 verse 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Let's go to verse 37. Matthew chapter number 12 verse 37. Listen to this. Uh, let's go to verse 30, uh, 60, uh, 36. Verse 36. Matthew 36. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And that's the angels of heaven, not the angels on earth. So that scripture is a whole nother one. Okay. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Given into marriage. Yeah. They were forced into marriage, some of them. The Bible says they were giving their daughters, forcing their daughters into marriage. Yeah, that's right. To be slept with the angels, the fallen angels, the yeah. sons of God. Yeah. And he uses that, he uses that as a precursor that when we look at this movement of breaking the marriage covenant. Is coming into through all over the nations. This movement that is coming in is a precursor of the great falling away and that the rapture is soon at hand. So we see the apostasy in the world, then the apostasy creeping into the churches. So the apostasy is not so much of preaching, just everybody focused as apostasy is false teachings. No, this is a reprobate mind given over to believers. I mean, believers, the moral decay that is going to creep, creep into the world. And the church is going to begin to accept the standards of the world. That is why the, um, the uh, 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 Laodicean church yeah. is called the, uh, uh, the, the, the apostate church. Yes. The church that is pulling away. Why? It is the apostate church. It is the church age we are living in right now, right before the rapture, that is going to accept the moral code, the law, the moral decay of society. And bring in that standard of the world into the church. And isn't it amazing? You haven't seen this anywhere else. You haven't seen the dark ages. You haven't seen the only time you've seen the, that, that, that standard of society coming into the church is now. Yeah. And Jesus said and prophesied and Paul prophesied the rapture will not take place unless that first happens. And we are right in the middle of this. So, so, so I see a lot of people giving comments and so on on you. Uh, I don't think we had anything negative. Eh? No, negative. Basically, what we are saying is we are closer than ever before with the rapture. Rapture can happen any moment. Okay, uh, This falling word has been prophesied by both Jesus and by Paul. If the apostasy that's coming in, don't worry, it's not your preacher that is falling into sin. Uh, it is... Um, uh, 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 it is not, um, it is not, it's not what we think it is. You know, even like people say all these false prophets and they are, you know, uh, a false prophet is a wolf in sheep clothing. Yes. Okay. A wolf in sheep clothing. So uh, that just that alone, and it will cause them to lead what other gods you have false prophets, then you have fake prophets and then you have true prophets. An expert asked me on, on, on a certain prophet, said to me, is it demonic and stuff? No, I said, no, it's not. It's just sleight of hand. <laughs> that's a sleight of hand. Nothing demonic, nothing. There's no demonic power there in that thing. That's not demonic. Don't give the devil so much credit. It's just sleight of hand. So you have false, you have fake, and then you have true. Can you lose your salvation? I just said it. How many times? <laughs> no, you cannot. And if you're not sure, I'm not sure if you fully have it. You see, there must be a full assurance of salvation in you. The Holy Spirit is given to you as a seal of your salvation, as a surety. That word surety means God is giving a part of him, the Holy Ghost, to you to tell you that you are his. And if you are lost and you're going to hell, he's losing that part of the Holy Ghost. That is how surety works in that Greek language. So the turning away of the apostasy, apostasy as the turning away from God, is even in a world sense, they're turning away not from God as salvation, guys, as God from the moral code, the law of God. I hope everybody understands me. So when it says a turning away from God, it is a turning away of the, lo the, 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 the moral code, the law of God, yes. the conscience that is put into every person. 
not believers, then it will creep into the church and it's going to pull believers away to fall into it. They're not going to lose their salvation because I'm stand assured you cannot lose your salvation. Give it to my scripture, I'll show you. And in fact, I'll tell you in many scriptures we have to tear out yeah. if you can lose your salvation.